Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sohini and I recently just graduated from UCLA as a pre-med student and I also recently just got into medical school. And so my goal with these videos is to make the MCAT and medical school process as accessible as possible. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how I reviewed my MCAT practice exam start to finish in order to score a 519 on the MCAT. So it's been a while since I've taken the MCAT. It's been about a year and a half. I took it after the sophomore year of my undergrad and I'm a graduate now. And so I, I dug through and I found all of my notes for every single practice exam that I took. And they're, uh, they're thicky boys. They're, uh, they're kind of thick. And so basically I'm going to go through my own methods for going through every single question on those practice exams and then kind of learning from my mistakes, writing stuff down and eventually working my way up to a top score. If you've watched my previous video on how I created my MCAT study schedule, you'll know that the very first day of your review before you've done any actual book practice or anything like that, I recommend taking the AAMC sample practice exam to kind of see what your baseline is. And so that's what I did. The very first day of my review, I took the sample test and I ended up scoring a 510. And so I recommend doing this for a number of reasons. One, I kind of wanted to see what my baseline score would be without, you know, practicing it all and kind of plan how I would study from there on out. I wanted to see what my weaknesses were, what the test logic would look like. I wanted to see how long the test would feel because it felt like freaking forever. And it gave me a good boost into kind of knowing exactly what I had to work to um, in three months after studying. So after I took that sample test the first day, went home recovered because that was a long ass test. And then the next day or two, I actually spent my time going through every single question. Here you can see AMC sample test review, date taken. 624, so June 24th, the first day of my review, I scored a 510, and then my score breakdown, I got a 126 in the chem phys. I got a 131 in CARS, which I think was my highest score of CARS in all of my review. I didn't even score that high on the actual exam. And then I got a one, is that a one? 128, I think, on bio biochem. I can't even read my own handwriting. And then I scored a 125 on the psych socio section. And so that was my breakdown. And uh, just for transparency's sake, on the actual exam, I scored a 519, and my score breakdown was a 131 for chem phys, a 130 for cars, and a 129 for both bio biochem and psych socio. So you can see here that I broke down my review into each section and then each passage. So CP chem phys is highlighted in green, and then each passage was highlighted in blue, because I would review uh, based on the passage, making sure I understood both the passage and the questions and answers associated with it. Uh, right after passage one, I wrote down some terms, so homodimer, TS analog, so transition state analogs, and the term in vivo. And so after that, I wrote down question numbers. And so for passage one, I actually didn't miss any of the questions, but I still went through and reviewed every single question. So for instance, number one, I wrote, transition state analogs are great enzyme inhibitors. Therefore, it is an antagonist because it binds and inhibits enzymes. Here, I was able to write down exactly why I got the right answer and write down any key terms that I would maybe need to practice and review in the future. So obviously for this first one, the main theme was enzyme inhibition and transition state analogs. And that was something that I wanted to review in depth later on in my studying. Uh, similarly for number four, I also got that one correct, but I wanted to write down why I got it correct so that I could understand it later on. And so I wrote down that it cleaves phenylalanine and proline. And then I wrote down the structures of both of those amino acids. So you might be wondering why I go through the questions that I got right. And it's because I might get those questions right, but I might get them right for the wrong reasons. For example, I might've gotten question four right and chosen the two amino acids that it cleaved correctly, but I could have guessed, right? Or I could have misremembered the structures of one or both of those amino acids and somehow weirdly logic my way into the right answer even though I actually didn't know the content. I wanted to make sure that even though I got questions right, I still wanted to kind of write down why I got them right and then understand the test logic and where they were coming from for 
making that question in the first place. And I really suggest that you do this because the more that you envelop yourself in the task logic of AAMC, the more you'll understand why they ask the questions that they do and how they ask the questions that they do. And the more familiar you are with that, the more likely you are to kind of gravitate towards the right answer, even if you're not 100% sure about the content. Next, we'll go into passage two, and you can see right over here, right off the bat, I got number five wrong, and I had you know marked it in red so that I would remember. The question had four answer choices that were all diagrams, and I had literally no idea what I was doing the first time I did, uh, took this exam. And so I wrote down both the diagram, I wrote down what the field lines are, where they're going from, um, and I basically gave myself a really good explanation of why I got that question wrong and made sure to kind of understand what my mistake was and that how I can solve it in the future. And you'll notice for the chem phys section, there's a lot more diagrams, a lot more equations, and that was kind of what I focused on. And then I wrote down the concepts and the explanations behind connecting those diagrams or equations to the actual problem stem. I did a very similar thing for the bio biochem section as well, which you can see here. I went through every single question, I got a lot wrong, <laughs> and I marked all of the ones that I was unsure of, and I went into depth and detail on why I got that question wrong. Maybe it was a concept error, maybe I just forgot what the actual question was asking about, or maybe it was a logic error, and I needed to rethink how they were wording the question and how I was thinking about my answer choices. I think for me, making the term lists for the psych socio section was my best bet because I didn't want to go through and just be like, oh, well, I got question one wrong because I didn't know what spreading activation was. I didn't get question two right because I didn't know what proactive interference was. There was terms on there like, what, like what is a visual spatial sketch pad? Like, what is that? Like, so I didn't find it helpful for me to just let myself know that every single question I got wrong pretty much was a content error because I just didn't. I wasn't exposed to it yet, and it let me know that I need to spend a lot of time with the Kaplan books and with the Khan Academy video notes in order to just shove all those definitions and terms into my head. I just made a terms and definition list for each of the passages, and I think it helped me out a lot. I did this for subsequent exams as well, and I just had to kind of make flashcards on Anki or just do whatever I needed to do to get the vocabulary into my head, and it's a lot easier to do psych socio once you just know the terms. So I skipped cars because I wanted to talk about it last and I did end up scoring a 131 on my sample exam and so I kind of went into my studying with the fault sense that I was really like naturally good at cars and I wouldn't have to worry about it. I just reading comprehension was just off the charts. No, I it was a fluke um, <laughs> my sample test. I ended up not doing super great on cars uh, throughout my studying. It was something that I had to work a lot on. Um, but because I thought that I was just naturally good at cars during my sample test, I didn't really write down much. You can see right here, it's just, I wrote down some tips and tricks because I noticed that I kind of had to keep my own logic and the author's logic separate. And I, I had to look for concrete evidence to back up the answer choices, things like that. And then very quickly, I wanted to go through my very last exam review. So this was my AAMC full length um, number three review. I kind of crossed out stuff, but it's 9, 11, 19. Um, so three days before my exam on September 14th. And you'll see that my score, I scored a 521. And my breakdown was a 131 for chem phys and then a 130 for all three of the other sections. So you can see here that this is not a thicky boy. She's actually very thin, it's only three pages. For me, it didn't make sense at the end of my exam review when I was only missing a few questions for each section to go through and write down stuff for every single question. I would still go through, say I got questions one through four correct, I'd still go through and be like, oh, okay, well I read this diagram correctly, or here's the concept that I understood and that led me to the right answer choice, or here's the equation that I remembered and so I could just plug in the numbers and get the right answer. Um, but I didn't have to write it down, uh, just for me it it just took too long to do it at the end, honestly I was burnt out. <laughs> you can still do it if you want to, if it's still helpful for you, but for me, you can see that I ended up just writing down my incorrect ones and then I marked the ones that I got wrong. I did pretty much the same thing that I did at the beginning of my exam review with the sample test. I would write down why I got it wrong or you know, important terms, important concepts, and just explain it in detail to myself. 
um, why the answer choice was correct and why I missed it. You'll see for this one I did go through and write down why I got the cars questions incorrect. Uh, for example, for number four, I extrapolated information. I tend to do that a lot. For number 27, I misinterpreted the answer choice. As you can see, bio, biochem, I went through pretty much the same way and just wrote down terms or definitions or concepts uh, that I didn't fully understand. For this one, I missed restriction enzymes, for example. Those were always a pain for me. And then for a psych socio, I no longer did term lists because at this point I had most of the definitions into my head. Now it was more of the logic and just understanding that like the other sections. So for example, number 52, I misapplied rule conflict and rule strain. Those are very similar terms and so I just kind of messed them up in my head. It wasn't that I didn't know what the term definitions were, it's just in the context of that question I had to choose, I chose the wrong one, I had to choose the right one. And, go through the nuances of why I chose which I chose. And then, um, this is a new section at the end, I had notes that I wrote down for some of the sections. For chem phys, I wrote down the units because I noticed that if I knew the units, I could figure out a lot of the answer choices if they were incorrect or correct right off the bat, just by unit choices. Uh, for bio biochem, I wrote down, for example, apoptic signaling can lead to growth arrest. That was something that I just needed to kind of review and put into my head. Not necessarily things that got wrong, just things that maybe hadn't come up enough in my studying or maybe things that I wanted to review, I put them into my notes section. So yeah, that's pretty much what I did for my exam review. And I put most of my exam prep at the end, last month of my study schedule. And so I was doing a test maybe every three or four days, reviewing in between, and then just rinse and repeat. I know that at the beginning I took almost two days to review all of my exams. One, because I was missing more questions and also two, because it's tedious. It's a tedious process to kind of go through every single question. But by the end of it, I was spending maybe a day because I was missing a lot less questions first off. And then I was also, I understood why I was missing the questions a lot easier. And so it was easier for me to write down on my exam review sheet why answer A was correct, why I picked answer D. I know that some of you that request in this video, I know that right now you might be struggling with how long it's taking to review your exams, but just trust me, it does get a lot easier. I think that the more content that you review, the less content mistakes that you'll make because you'll know the definitions and equations. And the more exams you take, the more familiar you'll be with your exam logic. And so you'll miss less logic questions that way as well. And hopefully by the end of it, you're scoring sort of in the range that you want to be and I wish you the best of luck for your actual exam. Okay, so my battery died, but I'm back. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If this video helped you at all in figuring out a better strategy in order to review your practice exams, please give this video a like and subscribe down below, comment what you thought, and comment any future video suggestions that you have as well that you want me to make, and I can get started working on those for you. And drop in the comments down below what methods you use for studying for your practice exams and what methods you use to review as well. I'd love to hear some tips and tricks from other people and y'all can share them with each other in the comments below. Okay, that's all for me. Uh, thanks so much for watching again and make sure you like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video. Sending love, bye.